G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean, and today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different, kind of a workshop inspired video, uh, but we're gonna be comparing the Noctua NHD15 to the Deepcool AS500 Plus, um, and we're gonna be putting it onto my AMD 5900X CPU to find out which one actually performs better and which one is actually worth your money. If you guys like this kind of content, uh, chuck it a like, get subscribed, and let's begin. So as you guys probably know already, I'm a big lover of the underdog. I love budget products that perform on par with the more expensive, the more premium options. And that's basically what we've got here. We've got the NHD15 um, Chromax Black Edition, which is a cooler that goes for about $220 compared to, I guess, a little brother in a way, um, the Deepcool AS500 Plus, uh, which is about $75, so half the price or even more than less than half the price, you know what I mean? So I'm actually just wanting to find out on the CPU which one does a better job better job of keeping it cool and quiet and is the cheaper option going to be fine? Um, I mean, I'm kind of expecting the Noctua one to perform better, but I'm just sort of wanting to know roughly by how much. Now, in terms of testing methodology, what we're gonna be doing is firing up Cinebench R23, doing a few runs, and then finding out what the maximum temperature is um, on the CPU package. We're using hardware monitor to measure that. And then we're gonna be jumping into Call of Duty Warzone, so we can put a load onto the GPU as well. Uh, running a few games, I think it's called Ground War, which puts a lot of load onto the CPU and GPU together, and measuring the max temperature, you know, in a gaming session sort of environment, um, because you've got that extra GPU here, sort of which one's going to do a better job of keeping the CPU cool I think is important so not only to measure CPU performance or CPU temperature alone but CPU and GPU together is I think a more realistic situation that I feel like you guys are probably going to appreciate um, in terms of noise I don't actually have a tool to measure the noise I'll just sort of be telling you which one I think is louder I'm expecting the Noctua one to be much quieter obviously uh, but I think that's probably the simplest way to test both of these cores that you guys will be able to digest and understand and help you make a decision now, in terms of the specifications of both of these coolers, um, I'll just whack up this bit of paper here to give you probably the most important parts. Um, the weight, the Deep Cool AES500 is 1198 grams versus 1320 from Noctua. Five six millimeter heat pipes versus six point, uh, sorry, six times six, uh, or six, six milli, six, oh my God, six, six millimeter heat pipes. Um, both of them come with two 140 millimeter fans in the box. The deep cool ones spin up to 1200. Deep cools, uh, sorry, Noctua's go up to 1500. Max CFM on deep cool is 70 versus 82. Noise 29 versus 24 in terms of decibels. Um, and then the heatsink dimension. So they are about the same height, 159 to 160. Um, the, I guess, depth is 140 mil versus 150 mil. Um, but then the thickness of the actual, I guess, the, uh, the heat sink, the stack, you've got 49 millimeters on the deep cool versus 135 on the Noctua, which is probably where you're gonna see um, why the Noctua one is performing way better, just cause there is physically just more, I guess, surface area to displace or, you know, to dissipate a lot of that heat. Um, price 75 versus 220. So if you're spending $75 on a CPU cooler and it performs really well or performs fine um, and does the job and it's not too loud, then that leaves you, you know, over a hundred and what's that $50 to spend on other things. So definitely I feel like this is a David versus Goliath kind of situation. Um, so let's basically cut here. Let's get both CPU coolers installed. Let's do those tests. Maybe leave a comment down below to which one you think will perform better. Once we get to the end of the video, maybe you'll be surprised by the results. Um, and yeah, I'm just kind of curious to see which one's better. So let's get this installation done. Let's get these tests done and we'll come back in a second. Um, not in a second, probably about 20, 30 minutes uh, with the results. All right, so we're just partway through filming and I thought I would just quickly share one thing um, about the Noctua NHD15, which is that there is not very uh, much clearance. If you've got tall RAM, like I've got this G-Skill Trident Z RAM, um, I cannot get that 140mm fan 
on this side and it's kind of hard to see but there is a heat sink just here um, i think that's for the vrms uh, which sticks up quite a bit as well and i cannot get the 140 mil fan on this side either so basically what we've got is the single 140 mil fan installed we're going to run at 800 rpm um, but basically you know if i was to try and attach it on this side or this side um, the glass which basically goes onto this i guess side case here um it's just not going to shut so just one thing to consider and i guess in a way that's kind of a win for the deep cool as 500 because it is a bit uh narrower um it does give you a bit more clearance there for ram and for your heat spreaders um to make compatibility a little bit better so one thing to be mindful of but this does have now a bigger heatsink. So let's get it back into the testing setup and see actually how it performs with one fan. Um, so yeah, just wanted to quickly pause and just, I guess, share that with you guys. Alrighty guys, so very interesting results today. Definitely was expecting the Noctua cooler to perform much better, but as you can see from the results, which are currently up on the screen right now, basically these two coolers perform the exact same way. And the AS500 didn't have those clearance issues in terms of clearing my RAM or the VRMs. The Deep Cool, sorry, the Noctua one only had one fan, which I know is not necessarily apples to apples, but that's just unfortunately because it wasn't able to clear the RAM and the VRMs on my particular setup. So if you do have tall RAM, tall VRM heat sinks on your motherboard, um, maybe look at the AS500 Plus, but as a conclusion, as a final summary, I would definitely be recommending the Deepcool AS500 Plus because it basically performed the exact same way. It was able to clear my RAM and my heatsink, so it's going to be much more compatible on you know all your different you know sort of uh, setups and combos that are out there. And in terms of noise, like it was a tiny, tiny bit louder than the Noctua cooler. So unless you know your acoustics is a real, real focus and you want to have the absolute quietest build possible, I'd be definitely going for the AS500. And it's also about $150 cheaper, so that's more money left over in your pocket to spend on other things like I don't know, maybe maybe upgraded memory or an SSD, keyboard, mouse, whatever. Just good to have that money in your pocket. Um, you know, I was really expecting this Noctua one to do better. It was unfortunate that I couldn't put that second fan on there, but that's just what I've got sort of available to me in terms of testing. So yeah, get the AS500, guys. It's only 75 bucks. It will do a really, really good job of cooling everything, keeping everything nice and quiet. You've also got a bit of RGB bling on there if you want to turn that on or off, you can definitely do that. I'd love to know what you guys think, though, of these results. Did I miss something? Please let me know down in the comment section. But if you found this video helpful, as always, hit the like button, get subscribed, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.